guys you're welcome back to my channel my name is bukumi Mike crown hope you guys are feeling good hope you guys are bouncing like a newborn baby so guys i'm here again with another video this time around i'm going to check out a video together titled what does it take to be a true muslim if muslim pray five times a day then why do the christians by dr lakid nike so let's watch guys assalamu alaikum uh, my name is Leon John and uh, firstly I'd like to thank my friend uh, Nurullah for bringing me here and uh, giving me this opportunity to hear some wonderful teachings from you. Okay. Now I've got two questions to ask. First is what does it take to be a true Muslim? And the second question is Muslims pray five times a day. Why don't uh, we Catholics and other religions pray five times a day? Is there any Explanation okay, for this. I now understand. Why don't Christians ask two questions. First is that what does it take to be a Muslim? Okay. What is the requirement? And second is why do Muslims pray five times, Catholics pray less? What is the reason? As far as what does it take to be a Muslim, as I mentioned earlier, Muslim means a person who submits his will to God. So if you submit your will to God and follow the commandments of God, you are a Muslim. The number one thing is that you bear witness that there's no God but Allah, no God but one true almighty God and you bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of this God. This is the basic faith. It is a fundamental creed known as Shahada. So once you say this, you enter into the basic fundamental creed and to be a good Muslim, you should submit your will to almighty God. So if you follow the commandments given by almighty God in the Quran, and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the authentic hadith, then you'll be a good practicing Muslim. Mm. As far as the second question is concerned, why do Muslims pray five times and we Christians, we pray less? The reason is, we Muslims, Salah is a sort of programming towards righteousness. See, normally people, they say pray. Pray is not the right translation of Salah. Mm. Pray means to ask for help. In Oxford Dictionary, pray means beseech. In Salah, we don't merely ask for help. Besides asking for help, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. In other religions, they only ask for help. In Islam, besides asking for help, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if the Imam, after Surah Fatiha, he recites the verse of the Quran, of Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90. Ya ayyoh ladhina amunu, O you believe, most certainly intoxicants and gambling. Mm. Dedication of stones, divination of arrows, mm. these are Satan's handiwork. First Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. Here we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our salah that don't have intoxicants. Don't gamble. Don't do fortune telling. Don't do idol worship. These are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. So besides asking for help, Besides asking, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I prefer calling Salah as programming towards righteousness. And if you analyze today, the amount of evil we see around us, you know, bad things happening, evil thing, obscenity, cheating, there are high chances that we can get deprogrammed. How a doctor tells you, for a healthy body, three meals a day. So our Creator Almighty God knows that we have to be programmed five times a day so that we will be on the straight track. So He is our Creator, He knows that. So if you are a true Christian, even you should offer five times. You know why? Why? Because if you read your scriptures, the book of Acts, like how we do ablution, Surah Maida chapter 5, verse number 5, that you have to wash your hands, wash your face, Rub the head with water and wash the feet up to ankle. Similarly is mentioned in the book of Acts. Similarly in the book of Exodus. That Aaron and Moses, they washed their face and hands before they appeared in front of the Lord. Same thing, the basic part of Sijda, the Sujood, if you read Genesis, chapter number 17, verse number 3. It says that Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. In Numbers, chapter number 20, verse number 6. Aaron 
and Moses, they fell on their face and prayed to God. Joshua, chapter number 5, verse number 14. Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. If you read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 26, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Garden of Gethsemane, okay. he took a few steps forward and fell on his face and prayed to God. Okay. Can an acrobat fall on his face and pray to God better than the way we Muslims do? When you do sujood, we put the highest part of the body, the forehead, on the lowest part of the ground and say, Glory be to Allah, the Most High. Glory be to Allah, the Most High, thrice. So all the prophets of the Bible, they prayed the same way as we Muslims pray. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Mm. Now, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that wait for the spirit of truth. Um, to be a true Muslim, you just have to follow the teachings of Quran. And wow, it's, it's also good the way Muslims pray five times a day. No, it's a good thing that you, you get to communicate to your Mecca more often. And some Christians might be doing that, even though it's not, you know, a doctrine in Christianity. Some people do that, you know, as a Christian. And I don't, I don't know about other religion. So it's really nice. So let's keep watching, guys. Talking about Muhammad, peace be upon him. And there are various references of Prophet Muhammad, mm. peace be upon him, in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. If you read the New Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse number 12. In the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. All of these references speak about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even in the New Testament, Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Gospel of John chapter number 15 verse number 26 Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7 Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 12 to 14 All of these references speak hmm. about the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him So if you're a true Christian If Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ Jesus peace Christ. be upon him We Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves hmm. If you're a true Christian You have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him And do ablution before Salah You should do sujood and you should pray five times a day. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Well, me, I would say, like, the way Muslims pray five times, as a Christian too, you can actually try it. If you've not been doing it, yeah, it's, it's a way of communicating with your maker and having, you know, communion with God and, you know, to make you closer to God. Yes, to make you closer to God. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more. Like, share, and comment. My name is Bokome. I will see you guys in my next video. Stay blessed. Bye.